Hello and welcome to the channel. Tonight is another takeover night and I'm really pleased to have an excellent creator who has stepped up and offered to help me out. Tonight it's One Minute Debunk. Now as his name suggests he normally does fairly short videos and I was a little concerned as to whether he would just do a one minute video and loop it about 10 times. But oh no, he's done a full sensible length episode for which I'm really grateful. I would ask that you do check out One Minute Debunk's channel after viewing this. Link will be up here somewhere. Okay, so thanks again One Minute Debunk. Looking forward to seeing this. Roll VT! Last year, Red's Rhetoric and Astronomy Live captured some lovely footage of the International Space Station transiting the Moon. Red's use these observations to calculate the altitude of the ISS and show it is indeed in space. Nice work! Certain people have criticised his maths in ways that generally don't make sense. There's been a bit of a back and forth about the maths, but the good thing about things like science and maths is that they invite criticism with open arms. So let's take a critical eye over the work of Red's rhetoric and see if there are any mistakes, issues or improvements. Before I get started, I'd like to preface this. I think Red's work was good. It was definitely fit for purpose. Taking even the most generous formulation of accuracy, his results show that the ISS is indeed in space. If you want to use any of the content of this video in an attempt to debunk Reds, know that the creator of this video, as in me, who clearly understands these concepts pretty well, absolutely disagrees with your position at a fundamental level. Reds and Astronomy Live's work is an A-grade project. This is extra credit? Okay, now that's over with, the gloves come off. Reds and Astronomy Live filmed the transit from two locations that were not quite perpendicular to the path of the transit, but pretty close. There's a small problem with the approach here. Let's use an example. On a nice sunny day, a butterfly flies across a garden. The shadow moves in a different direction to the direction of sunlight. The best way to capture parallax of the butterfly is to simultaneously photograph it from two positions. You don't want to use locations perpendicular to the path of the shadow, like this. You want to use locations perpendicular to the direction of sunlight, like this. Here are the positions of the ISS photographs, and a position on the transit path, from the coordinates in Red's video. This is the transit path. The distance between the photographs is 1107.1 meters, which we can calculate from the GPS coordinates. The nearest point on the transit path is here. The moon azimuth is 234.33 degrees. The perpendicular line from the nearest transit point is this line, and projecting the photograph positions onto that gives distances of 529.6 meters and 572.5 meters. Helpfully, their positions were very close to ideal. After a lot of reworking the position maths, Reds did eventually get something very close to this, and ultimately the exactness of this figure does not introduce a big error. Moving on, Red says the moon's average angular size is 0.52 degrees, and this is true, but it does vary quite significantly. Using mooncalc.org we can find the moon's orbital height at that precise time, 373,503 kilometers. The moon's radius is 1737.1 kilometers. And using the classic perspective formula, we can find its angular size is 0.533 degrees. But that's not perfect. We're not observing the moon from the centre of the Earth. Let's use this triangle, not to scale. This is the moon's orbital height. This is our distance above the centre of the Earth. 6,373.7 kilometres based on the GPS latitude. The moon's declination was 52.99 degrees, plus the 90 degrees of the horizon gives 142.99 degrees. Using the sine rule, we can work out this angle, and thus this angle, then this length, which is 368,394 kilometers. Using the perspective formula with that distance, the moon's angular size was 0.54 degrees that night. 
REDS measures the lengths on the image of the parallax to find a ratio between the moon size and the parallax size. He does this by rotating the image and counting lines of pixels. This step is very important, and it's, it's done afterwards on a computer, so we have as long as we need to make the best measurement we can. The two main issues I have here are, firstly, rotating the image is a little bit lossy. We want to measure the data in the highest resolution on the original image, with as little manipulation as possible. And secondly, measuring the moon using a single line throws away almost all of the image. The moon is partially in shadow, so there's not a direct line that will accurately measure the moon's diameter without part of it being obscured by shadow. I imported the original image into a vector art tool, Inkscape. Then I put measuring lines on the opposite side of the shadow, to the left and to the top of the moon. I then fit a circle to the top left curve of the moon as precisely as I could. Note that the circle encompasses the shadowed part, fitting mooncalc.org's representation of the moon's shadow. The two ISS transits aren't exactly parallel, but they are extremely close to parallel. I fitted one line to both and rotated it 90 degrees to measure between the two intersections. This gives a ratio of 4.27, which is slightly different from Red's value of 4.29. The next two issues relate to a common maths error. If you have an angle, you cannot divide it proportionally to distances like this. You will not get the right answer if you do this. You might be very close, but you won't be exactly correct. Of all the maths mistakes, this one is absolutely the most common. Pretty much every debunker out there makes this mistake. Please stop making this mistake. <sighs> what they're doing is an approximation. It's not, it's not accurate. So yeah, learn, this, this isn't quite right. It's okay, but it's not perfect. If you want more information about why this is wrong, look up angle trisection. Reds goes on to do this when he divides the moon's angular size by the ratio he measured. Due to the angles being small, far smaller than one degree, he got a, a very good figure, but let's work it out exactly. The perspective formula applies to both angles, the parallax angle and the moon's angular size. But the distances to both are different, and we don't know the ISS distance. That's fine. We simply solve the perspective formula for d, distance, and then substitute it into itself to get this. This formula should make intuitive sense. We turn the moon's angular size into a ratio of a right angle triangle using the tangent of half of it. Ratios are independent of distance, which is what we want. Then we scale this proportionally using the value we calculated before, and then finally, we use twice the arctangent to turn it back into an angle. With these corrections, the ISS angle is calculated to be 0 0.1266 degrees. The solution to the scaling triangle also suffered from the problem that you can't split angles proportional to distances. I covered this in my one minute debunk video about it and came up with a pretty messy formula. Instead, I'm going to recommend Walter Bislin's calculator, which uses a geometric solution, which is equivalent, but a lot more elegant. Using our figures from earlier, it gives an ISS distance of 498.9 kilometers. I will point out that Red's is absolutely correct. That exactness here is not important. Due to the extremely tiny angle of the parallax, changing from a scaling to an approximation of an isosceles triangle, only moves the result by about a ten thousandth of a percent. Okie dokie, now we have our distance, we can work out the altitude of the ISS on the flat model, like REDS, or on a globe, but maybe not the way Astronomy Live did it, because the method he used is kind of long-winded and a bit complicated. Instead, let's just solve it as a triangle using the cosine rule. As before, the radius of the Earth at the observational latitude is 6,373.7 kilometers. Remember, the Earth isn't an exact sphere, it's an oblate spheroid. The radius is dependent on the latitude, and usually that's only going to be a couple of kilometers difference, but because we're trying to be exact, a couple of kilometers is well worth taking account of. The radius under the ISS is 6,374.2 kilometers. The view was looking at the moon at a declination of 52.99 plus 90 degrees, which 
as before is 142.99 degrees. Using the cosine rule, we can calculate this distance as 6,778.8 kilometers, which is the distance from the ISS to the center of the Earth. Then subtract the Earth height at that location to get the final altitude of 404.6 kilometers. That's a great figure, but how good is it? The space station's orbit is often given as 408 to 410 kilometers, so that seems very close, but we can actually look up the orbital history of the ISS, and we'll find it varies as the orbit slowly decays, and as the station is boosted up to compensate. At the exact time of the measurement, it was at 406.28 kilometers, so our figure was around 0.42% off. That's a fantastic result. Using the solved angular measurements from Astronomy Live gives an altitude of 408.1 km, which is also around 0.4% off. To conclude, these measurements were very, very good. Excellent work by Reds and Astronomy Live. The biggest improvement was made by calculating the angular ratio more precisely. That shows that a good analysis is important, and so is making the data available for others to analyse, which Reds and Astronomy Live have always endeavoured to do. The final question is, what could be done to make the measurement more accurate? There are a lot of smaller factors, such as that the Moon is not infinitely far away, and thus has itself a small parallax factor. The orbit of the Earth and the Moon are also affected by all sorts of other celestial bodies, and maybe a few, maybe dozen meters one way or another. And that's all a bit fiddly. The easiest way to improve a measurement is by increasing the sample size. This was a parallax measured only with two samples, Red's footage and Astronomy Live's footage. What if there had been three, or five, or twenty recordings? Each additional sample helps to identify and remove errors, and makes a stronger case that the analysis behind what was observed is correct. Before I go, just to reiterate, I'm not debunking the excellent work that was done for this measurement. Every crease I've ironed out has only strengthened the position that independent measurements of reality comport accurately with information provided by space agencies, that the ISS is in space, and that mathematics is not subjective. Okay, that's everything. The ISS is in space and maths is fun. Thanks to Mr. Sensible for posting this video, and if you like my kind of droning, boring voice, then, then check out my channel, One Minute Debunk. I'm out of here. Bye! Well, that was wonderful, One Minute. Absolutely brilliant. And I hope you enjoyed doing something different yourself. Maybe you should do a few more of them. Change your channel to 15 Minute Debunk, maybe. I don't know. Anyway, as I said before, please check out his channel. The link is also in the description below. I look forward to seeing you all again soon. Just as I'm leaving, I'd like to say big thanks to all my wonderful patrons. As always, massive thanks to all my patrons, including new patrons, Corpus Defectus, Tiffany Hall, Era Bathron, Bardtail, Francis Cimenti, William Foley, Alice Vangstrom, John Roswell and Techblog, and my very latest patron, Pyro Kitty Cat. Thank you all so very much. Shut up and sit down.